who is God to you? How do you see the Lord? What's his role in your life? Or rather, where have you placed him in your heart? Does he occupy your whole heart? Or does he have a fraction of your heart? I wonder, in your mind, does the Lord occupy a significant amount of time in your thoughts? Or does he struggle just to get you to think about him for more than five minutes in the day? Who is God to you? I encourage you to see the Lord for who he truly is. God is nothing to play with. He is all-powerful and omnipotent, meaning that he is unlimited in his power and in his authority. God is omnipresent, and that means that he's in all places at all times. He's a sovereign God, the great I Am. So whatever we desire, God is the I Am of that. If it's protection, God says, I am your protection. Should you need to be rescued? God says, I am your rescue. You see, God is the owner of cattle on a thousand hills. Heaven and earth are his. Matthew 1 verse 23 says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. He is Emmanuel meaning that God is with us. He is the father to the fatherless, and he's a husband to the widow. He is Jehovah El Shaddai, our bountiful supplier. Jehovah Rapha is his name. He is our peace and our righteousness. So, I'll ask you again, who is God to you? I encourage you to let God's power and his presence, let it permeate every cell of your body, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, you're never alone. He's with you every step of the way. You're never powerless with God on your side. Scripture says in 2 Corinthians Chapter 12, verse 9. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The Lord is the architect of our lives and the chief cornerstone. Therefore, he is the answer that we are looking for and the hope that you and I are seeking. Who is God? What a question, right? Well, to answer this question, we need to start by looking in the Word of God. What does the Word of God say about who God is? 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man, but God is faithful. And then 1 John 1, verse 5 says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Numbers 23, verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Psalms chapter 116, verse 5 says, Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yes, our God is merciful. And finally, Psalms 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. 
So from these few passages of scripture, we can learn the following. God is love. God is faithful. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. God is not a man that he should lie. God is a son and shield. And God is merciful. Saints, we serve a living God, an awesome and all-powerful God. And I believe that God reveals himself in his word. He is revealed in scripture. So for anyone who can't answer the question, who is God? The first thing I would tell you is to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through him. The second thing that I would tell you to do is to open your Bible because inside the pages of the Bible, you will find out who God is. And one thing I love about the Bible is that it speaks about God in the present tense. God is. God is full of compassion. God is light. God is love because he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Over and over again, the Bible says God is. And we should be strengthened by this, strengthened by the fact that our God is living. Saints, we need to praise and acknowledge God for who he truly is. God is. He is love. God is merciful. God is the great I am. God is almighty. We must respect his word and we must reverence him for his glorious work. We must adore him for being so powerful, but yet so tender and caring to us. Now let us pray. My heavenly father, the one who holds all of creation in his hands, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for loving me, sustaining me, giving me life. And above all, God, I thank you for caring so much that you gave your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so that I may believe and not perish, so that I may not be destroyed, but rather so that I may be saved. Thank you, Almighty God, for your precious Son, the precious Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross for me so that today I can say that I am redeemed, I am loved, and I am set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, you deserve all glory, all the glory for your awesome power. So great are your abilities that you measured the waters in each and every ocean, in every river, and in all of the seas. I praise you because there is no limit to your abilities, God. There is nothing that you cannot do. Just as the book of Isaiah says, whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him? Who was it that taught him knowledge? There is no one who can enlighten you because you are the God of light. There is nothing that anyone can teach you because you are filled with infinite wisdom. Your ways are higher than ours. Your thoughts are higher than ours. You are a God of great power, might, and strength. Father, I thank you for being faithful because if you turned your back on me, where would I be? Without your love and mercy, God, where would I be? Without the precious sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, God, where would I be? I am here because of you, and I praise you and worship you. Your word says that you are enthroned above the circle of the earth, and people are as powerless as grasshoppers before you. Angels surround your glorious throne and sing, Holy, holy, holy to the Lord God Almighty. There are no words to properly describe your awesome nature, your infinite wisdom, and your supernatural power. So today, I offer up my praises to you. 
There is nothing else that I can give you but my heart, my praise, and my adoration. You are my unfailing protector who gives me an eternal home. You are a God who watches over me and my family, and I praise you for you have never let me down. There is no one else like you, Father. The Bible in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Christ Jesus. Lord Jesus, I thank you, King Jesus, for being my rock and pillar. Thank you for being my rescue in this world. I will rejoice always and I will give you my thanks in all circumstances because you have a plan for my life that is divine and for a greater purpose. So I trust that all of my steps are ordered by you. I have confidence in your word that tells me to approach the throne of grace boldly and that if I ask anything according to your will, then I know that you will hear me. Lord Jesus, I simply want to thank you. Thank you for being good to me. Thank you for being patient with me. Your word says in Psalms chapter 4, verse 1, Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. I trust and believe in you, King Jesus, that you will answer me when I call out your name. You offer me relief from distress. You offer me wholeness from loneliness or insecurities. You offer me love and acceptance when the world would choose to condemn me. And for that, I am thankful and I rejoice. King Jesus, in your word, you say that you came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. And so I thank you for dying on the cross for me to set me free from my sins. Thank you for your sacrifice so that I may be with you in all of eternity. I pray that my relationship with you will continue to be strengthened day by day. May it continue to grow and be closer and more intimate. Be glorified, King Jesus. Be glorified always. Thank you for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Verses 18 through 20. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live you also will live. And that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Be strong, saints, and stand in faith. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13 says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man, but God is faithful. And then 1 John chapter 1 verse 5 says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Psalms chapter 116 verse 5 says, Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yes, our God is 
merciful. And finally, Psalms 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. 